Our next tale is entitled Never Talk to Strangers, written by Isaac Faraday and read by James Lewis. Upset days while I was attending college, I would walk to classes from my dumpy little apartment about a mile away from campus. There were several routes I would take, but my favorite was a small paved path through a park that followed the river. This park was very nice. It had benches every few hundred feet facing the water, and so many trees that you couldn't even see that the busiest street in town was only a few hundred yards away. This path was out of the way, so the only real traffic on it in the middle of the day was the occasional jogger or bicyclist. I used this path maybe two or three times a month, and every time on the same bench there would be this little old man in a nice suit facing the water, just staring down at the shore. He seemed to be in his mid to late 80s, and I just assumed he came there every day because he had nothing else to occupy his time. I felt sorry for him. He seemed so lonely, just sitting on the bench all alone, all day. I decided I would be a good person and sit down and talk with him. I thought maybe that the old man came there every day, hoping somebody would sit down next to him and talk. On a very nice day at the beginning of spring, I was walking down the path and saw the old man sitting on the bench. I walked up to the bench and sat down next to him and said hello. The old man didn't look up from the river. He kept his eyes right on the spot he had always been staring at. I said a hello a little louder, thinking he may not have heard me the first time. This time he replies, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. I was busy watching the boys play down in the water. I was very thrown off by this. I thought this poor old man must have Alzheimer's and comes here every day reliving his past. I ask him if they are his sons. He frowns and says, No, but it's my responsibility to watch them. I didn't want to play along with his delusions too much, but he obviously cared a lot about these imaginary boys, so I asked him why it was his responsibility. He gets a very sullen look on his face, almost as if he was going to cry at any moment, and he says in a voice I can barely hear over the moving water, I threw them in there, and I need to be damn sure none of them ever try to get back out. I promptly said goodbye, walked away, and never used the river path again. 